Hi, Dr. Mindy Curry here. I'm a naturopathic doctor. I do house calls in the greater Portland area. And I come here to YouTube to tell you guys about uh, local medicine that you can easily get for yourself and make into um, wonderful products that you can use to improve your health. And here I am in a forest of hawthorn. This is Crataegus species. I'm not sure exactly which one this is, but it is everywhere around me. And what I'm looking for, what I'm hunting for today, is the hawthorn berry. Let's, so, let's go see if we can find some. Okay, and here we are. We found some hawthorn berries. Now, the hawthorn tree, it's native to most northern regions. Most northern regions will have a hawthorn species present, and they're usually used in pretty similar ways. That's China, Europe, North America. It's all out there. It's been used by Native Americans. European medicine and folklore, Chinese medicine. This is just a, a quite a grove, an overgrown grove of hawthorn here. Not the best place to pick. There's too many trees, not quite enough light. But I found a little patch of them here. And you can see these berries are just lovely. Little tiny red apple kind of berries. Now, Crataegus hawthorn is a member of the rose family. See these lovely leaves. And what hawthorn is really great for is the heart. Uh, it's known as a, just a cardiac tonic for most things heart related. It helps with hypertension, um, arrhythmias. It increases the contractions of the heart. It generally helps with uh, congestive heart failure and, and just a variety of things have been shown scientifically to actually work a little bit better when you include the hawthorn berry. It's not a dramatic drug. This is more of a tonic, like I said. It just improves things a little bit. So don't expect to take this and your extreme hypertension goes away. This is something you add to a hypertension formula. This will take it down. I don't know, maybe five points, ten if you're really lucky. But in addition to other things, it's really great. Um, the procyanins and the bioflavonoids are the compounds that are most interesting to science in this guy. And uh, basically, it's an extreme antioxidant. And also, can that helps with cholesterol keeping your cholesterol less oxidized, less likely to form plaques. So this berry has quite a number of delightful uses also for um, just strengthening the soul and making a person a bit more happy and relaxed with their life. Kind of a general heart tonic, like I said. That's the hawthorn berry. And uh, what I want to do is I'm going to collect these hawthorn berries, <clears throat> make them into a tincture. Another time of the year, I would also collect the leaf and flower of the hawthorn and also make that into a tincture. And then later on, combine the two. But today, for this adventure, we're going to hunt 
these hawthorns in my local wetland and these are here non-native and invasive so we'll be picking those and making a lovely tincture out of them let's let's get picking and I'll meet you back in my kitchen here's a better sunlit view of this hawthorn forest you can see some of these branches are really laden these trees can get very big if they're not totally crowded like these ones are these ones are really densely packed in but they don't have to be one of those trees could be a like a really big tree like the size of an oak tree and just covered in these beautiful little berries right now Good fat clusters right there. That's what you want to find and start picking on. Here's a good look at the hawthorn leaf. It's got quite a lovely and distinctive shape there with its different lobes. Very uh, symmetrical. Different numbers of lobes depending on its age but uh, quite a pretty leaf, quite distinctive. You'll see it and you'll recognize it once you know it. Now when you pick these, you kind of want to just kind of pop them off. You want to leave the leaves and stems intact if you can so they can grow back nice next year flower again and you just kind of pop them off they're pretty easy to pop off sometimes they get a little smushed you're going to process them right away so that's not a bad thing and there you've got a handful of beautiful hawthorn berries and we're going to make some wonderful medicine out of those next. Okay, here we are. <clears throat> We've got a whole big bag full of hawthorn berries from, from out in the trees. It's a lovely batch. So the first thing, of course, you're going to want to do with that is wash it. Um, there are definitely little <coughs> birds and critters living up in that tree. So basically, <laughs> wow, Ooh, got too many, <laughs> love it. those off. And just take out any weird bits that you see. Take out these leaves, for instance. Um, you want to look and inspect them, see if you see any that look like they've got worms or any kind of mold or something, and just discard those ones. It's so just the quality control step here. You've Check them once when you pull them off the tree. This is another check to see if you got the right ones. It'd be useful to do this kind of by the handful. Some of these got a little bit smushed, 
when I pull them off the tree and they're not a problem. It's just more of these ones that just don't look good at all that need to go. Smooshed is fine. Okay, so let's get these. Basically, we're going to make a tincture out of this. So once we wash these, we're going to put them into the blender, basically. And uh, then add alcohol. And this is basically just vodka, 80% vodka that we're going to use today. It's good enough for our purposes with these hawthorn berries. And the alcohol basically is to preserve the hawthorn berry to keep it from getting moldy, but also to extract the medicinal compounds and make it easy to take. <clears throat> These hawthorn berries, they're not, they're not tasty berries. You wouldn't want to just sit there and snack on these like tiny apples. Um, slightly reminiscent of a tiny apple, but if a tiny apple had no real flavor and was very mushy tasting. Um, you can do it. You can chew on one. It's not going to hurt you. But it's not something you're going to want to really enjoy eating. And they are a seasonal fruit, so you want to preserve these for the rest of the year. You want to take this for, say, your hypertension or your heart arrhythmia or angina or something. Then you're probably going to need to turn it into a tincture possibly a syrup, but I'm not a big fan of using a ton of sugar on everything. Uh, so I also like that when it's in a tincture, you can take a smaller amount and still get the same effects. It's a very excellent way of extracting and potentizing the medicine. Okay, so now we've got just about, um, we've definitely got up to the fill line. Eh, maybe a little too far. <laughs> Let's get back to the fill line. Don't go over the fill line of your blender, which appears to be right about there. So, um, the next point is to add the alcohol. And one thing about the Hawthorne Berry is that it has a weird chemistry. It's extremely got a lot of pectin in it. And so it basically, it turns immediately into jello as soon as you get it, um, the alcohol in there and get it processed up. So you're gonna need to move it into the jar pretty quickly when it's still kind of a liquid. So let's get set up with that so we can do that real quick and not, uh, not let it set up too much before we get it in the jar. Okay, once again, we are using 80 proof vodka. We're just gonna pour that into our hawthorn berries in the blender here. Oh, that looks like it's hopefully enough. If not, we'll add some more, but uh, let's get that grinding. We just want to blend that into a, a real nice chopped up consistency. I've seen some people just soak whole hawthorn berries in alcohol. This never set right to me. It seems too much like soaking whole apples in water to get apple juice. But also, I'm not trying to make a smoothie, just bust open the fruit to get to all the goodness inside. You can cut them with a knife, but it takes much longer. Okay, so one thing about the hawthorn berries is that they've got a really hard little seed in them. 
So it's not going to be something you'd want to drink in a smoothie unless you really carefully took out that seed, which would be difficult since it's already beginning to jelly up. So we need to pop the lid and pour it more directly to get it in there. This will become basically a solid, kind of almost solid jelly lump within a very short period of time. But that's okay. You just want to leave it sit like that for a couple months. And there you will have a hawthorn berry tincture. You'll press that out. Um, you'll either want to put that in like a bag and just really squeeze it out. Um, but the best thing to do is put it into a fruit press and um, press it through a fruit press. It can be easily extracted. You get these, um, these kind of mesh produce bags. You can just pour this into one of those mesh produce bags, not too much of it at a time, and then squeeze it really tight and get the juice out. This is one way if you don't have a fruit press, I'll be using a fruit press. And then I will add that to a tincture I'll make in the spring out of the flower and leaf. And those two together are my flower, leaf, and uh, berry hawthorn tincture that I use in a variety of formulas, most often for uh, trying to reduce hypertension. Hawthorn tincture, it's a... Uh, <laughs> looks more like a hawthorn jelly but it is it does preserve quite well and it can be pressed out and that's how I've learned it okay one more thing you're going to want to fill your jar to the top you don't want a lot of air spaces that can oxidize change color and you want to definitely carefully wipe your rim before you put your lid on so this is something that's definitely kept lid on in a cool dark place for a couple months before you go and press that tincture out. It's not going to be the easiest thing to press out. It's going to be pretty much a jelly. Already is pretty much a jelly. But there will be some liquid that is easily poured off, but a lot of it you'll just have to squeeze by sheer manual um, thumb power or, or with a fruit press. Hawthorne tincture. So now that I've shown you how to make some wonderful medicine, I want to remind you that it's very important to go see a doctor or a naturopath or at least an herbalist before starting any herbals for your conditions. For one thing, you may not really understand what your diagnosis is. You may think it's just a little bit of this and that that can be treated with some plants when it's really something serious and you're missing it and it could, could be fatal. Um, also, there are interactions between herbs and drugs, and there's also contraindications between some of the problems you may be having and the herbs you may think you need. <laughs> so don't start taking anything willy-nilly unless you're sure what's going on. And to be sure, come see a naturopath like me. I'm in Portland, Oregon. I do house calls in the greater Portland area, and I also have an office in Milwaukee.